Well, that lighting's terrible. Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. And yes, if you're new to the channel, I'm fully aware I'm not outside. Most of my videos are not, so you don't have to leave me a comment telling me otherwise. Today I want to give a quick overview on two different types of ascenders. A rope prusik and a mechanical ascender, in this case of the version of the Ropeman 1. I'm going to go over why I've started using a prusik again by using a prusik tender instead of using a Ropeman 1, although as you see I still am using it as part of my saddle system. It's the part that connects my bridge of my saddle to my main tether line, but I'm still using a prusik on my lineman's belt. I want to show you how I'm doing that and keeping it super silent, super simple, and super cheap. So bear with me for a second before I step over to this big old white oak tree here in my basement. I'm going to go over the two types of ascenders and their benefits and their disadvantages and why I've chosen to go with one over the other on my lineman's belt. So here we have the two types of ascenders here on my tether. We'll start with the rope man. It's a mechanical ascender and they function exactly the same as a prusik. You have a carabiner that's attached to it. allow you to feed rope one way, but as soon as you apply pressure the other way, the mechanical ascender will stop it. Very nice system, very smooth, very easy, one-handed operation. Uh, if I was clipped into my lineman's belt, I would use this little uh, pull tab, lift this up, and it would pull line right through uh, until I get to my desired length. As soon as I let go, it would seize up again and stop me from falling off the tree. The only disadvantage to this, well, two disadvantages really, one is the weight and the noise being metal it's going to clank, it might clank off a stick, might clank off a carabiner, some other part of your safety system or your stand, and it might make some noise. You might have to spend a little time silencing that down. The other disadvantage is that things, these things run about 45 to 50 bucks. That's not cheap, um, that's just for one of them. And typically you wanna have a two Prusik system, one for your tether if you're wearing a standard uh, uh, four point safety harness that has a tether that comes off your back, or like me, I wear a rope climbing harness, uh, so it would go around my waist, but the same idea. I'm gonna Want two of these and at 45 50 bucks a pop that's just not really practical for me now on the other end is a rope prusik it works exactly the same you can slide it up and down when it's not under tension and as soon as you put tension on it it's going to bite down onto the rope and it's going to stop you and it will bite either direction unlike the rope min one it's only going to bite in one direction which i pull this way if i pull this way the rope's just going to feed right through it so that's kind of slick um, that a Prusik can bite either direction. However, the problem with Prusiks is that they are not one-handed operation. You have to let this line go slack before you can push it. As you see, you kind of have to inchworm it up a little bit. Um, if you want, you can you know, hold the other end and try to push up, and now you're using both hands. And when you're trying to put on a stand or a climbing stick, you can't really just let go of the tree while you're trying to do that. You're usually holding onto the rope or the tree on the backside while you operate with the other hand. Uh, another thing is too is that when these get tight, you really put a lot of weight and tension underneath them, they can get really stiff and really hard to come undone. Whereas this rope man is going to be the same amount of pressure whether you had it under a whole bunch of tension or not. Of course, a huge advantage with a rope prusik is that these things are going to be way cheaper to produce. Uh, this is 8 millimeter accessory cord that I got from REI on this 11 millimeter uh, Blue Water Static line that I also got from REI. Um, these things, I got 30 feet of it. I think it's about... 40, 45 cents a foot. So you can get 30 feet of it for around 15 bucks, uh, maybe 20 after shipping. So you can make a whole bunch of these. So the crux of this video is believe it or not, you can have the quality and the ease of use of a Rope Man 1 with a Prusik knot, using it with one hand with something as cheap as about a 10 cent or less piece of cord. And this is all it is. It's a small little piece. I made mine out of an old pole rope that I had to uh, carry my bow uh, up into the tree with me or pull up a stick or stand. Maybe a couple mil rope. You can make it out of 550 paracord if you want. You basically tie it into uh, kind of a Mickey Mouse ear shape, if you will. You want to have one loop be a little bit bigger than the other. And I'll explain that more when I come over to my tree over here. Uh, but this is what's going to move your Prusik for you, allowing you to use it with one hand. And uh, at 10 cents or less a piece, I'll take this over a rope man. Notice that my tender is significantly shorter than my Prusik length by several inches, and that's key. You want your tender to be shorter. I don't know if there's any necessarily any practical math that goes into the actual length, but you need it behind your Prusik so that when you go to pull, it's going to actually move the Prusik up with the tender, and I'll show you that when I get over here, but this has to be shorter. If it's too long, it won't function properly. Okay, so I now have the Prusik system underweight here on the 
post here in my basement. You see the Prusik has taken uh, the tension into the line. You see how the line goes in a straight line into the Prusik here, and now the main line's coming off at an angle. That means that now the tension is no longer under this line, but is now into the Prusik, and if I was to ease up on the lineman's belt, you can see that I could easily move this as now that it's slack. But as soon as I add weight into it, it bites back in. Usually when you had without a Prusik tender, and again, notice how much shorter it is than the actual uh, Prusik itself. And again, this is not, or I should say, firstly, this is not load bearing here at all. There is no load, as you see, it's completely slack. All the load is put into the Prusik here. There will never be a time where any of my weight is put on this in a load bearing situation. The only time this will be under tension is when I go to utilize it to move the Prusik up and down the main line. So without the Prusik tender, you would have to alleviate slack like this. Again, leaning out away from the tree, taking your hand off the tree or something like that, and then moving this up. But again, you'd have to let go of the tree in order for that to happen. Then of course you can just move it back down like so. But with using a tender, I can take the tag end and even under a little bit of weight, I can just lift up on my tag end and this Prusik tender, because now a little bit of tension, not a load bearing tension, but a little bit of tension is being put into this. It will now push up on the Prusik for me and my lineman's belt, as you can we'll see, will tighten. So I can let slack out, grab the tag end, Prusik tender is being put under tension, but it's not a load bearing tension at all. Just a couple of pounds of weight. Step close to the tree, one hand, moves up. Step close to the tree, moves up. Step close to the tree, moves up. It's not super smooth, but it's very quiet. There's no extra metal added. Uh, into the system. Unlike with a rope man, there'd be the carabiner and then the rope man up here. Extra weight and extra potential metal noise. Just a little piece of rope, probably about a uh, total loop length of about four inches or five inches that I tied down into. Um, I'd say it's probably about twice the diameter. Uh, this uh, larger loop is about, probably about twice the diameter of the 11 mill millimeter static line. You definitely want it to be smaller, the loop, and particularly when it's put under tension, you want it to be smaller than the overall diameter of your Prusik as it goes around. If it's too big, it could hop over it and get into the coils, and then your tender's no good. So you want it big enough that it will slide up and down your main line easily, but you want it big enough that it will, or uh, uh, small enough that it will get behind the Prusik and push it forward when you want it to. Here's another potential system you could use. This is actually piece off of one of my kids swing sets it's just a uh, piece of uh, lanyard uh, webbing uh, obviously not load bearing couple of just uh, uh, regular metal d-rings in there they would be a little bit smoother uh, you notice that there's not the uh, kind of the hard rubbing it's much more silent um, but obviously being two pieces of metal they're going to clink together and clank together so I have another set of this that I, I wrap these up in a little bit of athletic tape that uh, dulled it down but again then I'm adding a little bit of friction but it works just as smoothly as their other one, if not a little bit more smoothly. And again, I can just I can just at least stand into the tree, pull this up as much as I need to, back it off as much as I need to. And again, another thought about uh, Prusiks, you don't want to grab the Prusik to loosen it um, because if you start to fall, your first reaction is going to be to squeeze. And when you squeeze the Prusik knot, it loosens it and it'll just, it'll just keep going. So you never want to grab actually onto the Prusik knot itself. You always want to grab above or below the knot. Um, in the case of the tender, obviously you're going below the knot, but you always want to grab up here. That way in the event that you this does start to go, you could actually grab onto the rope itself instead of grabbing onto the Prusik. You grab onto the Prusik, you're going to keep sliding and sliding and sliding. And if you're using a lifeline or something like that, not just necessarily a lineman's belt, if you're using a lifeline and you grab onto the Prusik, you can end up falling all the way to the ground. So never grab onto the Prusik, always go up above, because if it ends up sliding too much, you'll actually grip onto the rope and you might be able to stop yourself. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about any part of my system, Prusik tenders, tethers, saddles, all the links are in the description below, like I mentioned before, but you can also leave a comment here on Facebook. Hit me an email or Facebook or Instagram. All those links are also down there as well. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and we'll get to see you next time.